I'm Jeffrey Klein. I'm an emergency medicine physician at the Indiana University School of Medicine and a researcher that's interested in pulmonary embolism. We're here to talk about the paper, Decreased Facial Expression Variability in Patients with Serious Cardiopulmonary Disease in the Emergency Care Setting, recently published in the Emergency Medicine Journal. My interest in this work stemmed out of the fact that all humans convey information about the state of their health through nonverbal actions. And most of us have the ability to detect this information. I've observed over 25 years of practice that emergency medicine physicians use this information, in particular the patient's facial expressions, to make decisions about diagnostic testing. I'm particularly interested in the condition of pulmonary embolism. I'm Don Newman. I'm assistant research faculty at Indiana University School of Medicine in the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. Facial expressions are a core component of my research. My primary area of expertise pertains to problems that patients with traumatic brain injury have with recognizing other people's facial expressions, as well as changes to their own facial expressions. The common denominator between my research in patients with traumatic brain injury and this research in patients with pulmonary embolism is that an abnormality in health tends to result in an abnormality in affect expression. What differs is that this research seeks to use facial expressions as a diagnostic instrument to detect serious illness. We programmed a laptop computer to simultaneously video the patient's face while the patient watched stimuli slides. We picked these slides to convey emotions of happiness, surprise, and sadness. Now what I thought, based on my previous work and experience, was that patients who were sick would have less facial expression variability compared to patients that were healthy. Now to decide who was sick, all of these patients underwent CT scanning of the chest to look for possible pulmonary embolism. And then we used structured criteria to decide who had a serious problem and which patients were healthy. We then went on and analyzed these videos after the fact. We used the facial action coding system to evaluate patients' facial expressions. This method assigns a numeric value to indicate which face muscles are involved and the degree to which these face muscles moved. These numeric values were then aggregated into groups to objectively determine specific emotional expressions such as joy, sadness, and surprise. Another methodological objective of this study was to see if our independent observers assigned similar values to our patients' facial expressions. Currently, the facial action coding system is the gold standard for objectively measuring facial expressions. The most important finding from this study was that patients who had serious cardiopulmonary problems had lower facial action coding system scores compared to patients that were healthy. This indicated less affect variability in the sick patients compared to the healthy patients. We also found that sick patients were less likely to show a facial expression of surprise compared to the patients who were healthy. We found that the two observers had good agreement on their facial action coding system scores for slide number one, but this agreement decreased with slides two and three. One limitation of this study is that we did not use standardized stimuli meaning that we didn't really know what the typical or normal response to these stimuli should have been. Also, the facial action coding system requires a lot of time and effort to learn and to administer, which really isn't practical in this setting. In our ongoing work, we are addressing these limitations by introducing standardized stimuli, as well as a humorous video clip. Also, we are 
measuring our patients' facial expressions with a computerized software program that quickly and objectively can evaluate the patient's facial expressions. We hope that information from this research helps physicians be able to recognize a specific affect pattern that lets them rule out serious cardiopulmonary illness and therefore reduce unnecessary diagnostic testing, particularly for patients with possible pulmonary embolism.